Hey everybody, we're just going to do a live mat removal. We don't have uh, we don't have too many mats. This is a doe. This is Tuppence. She had a litter of she has a litter of six babies right now, so she was trimmed up to here. So all this coat was left on. It was still pretty chilly, but when that happens, you end up with mats right here, all around the outer. And when the babies start crawling all on the mom, this starts getting all matted up. So this is a pretty easy mat removal because these are not deep. I get a lot of requests for removal of mats that are deep. So one of the things I'm doing is I'm using this hand, I'm holding the wool back. It causes a little bit of tension and you can clearly see where to cut. I'm not making big cuts. Some of the mats on other rabbits would go straight down to the skin. And that, um, I have only had one rabbit that I purchased that had a mat down to the skin and a scissors, a pair of scissors like this, this would not work for it because this is too, this is too tall. So what I ended up using is I found the thinnest pair of scissors I could, which happened to be like cuticle trimmers, very small. And with trimming the mats, I ended up trimming just incredibly small cuts, very, very small sections of wool and taking a lot of breaks. It, it took a long time to shear that particular rabbit. I'm also holding my scissors at an angle so where I find it, I'm not cutting even with the body, I'm holding them up. This leaves a little bit of wool on the rabbit. It gives you some distance between the skin and the wool as well. I just kind of move around. Um, Matt's can cause a lot of pulling on the skin for the rabbit. It causes a lot of tension from, it's like if you had somebody pulling on your hair, it doesn't feel good. Um, with mats on a rabbit, you might start finding patches that the rabbit is just from movement, just from the actual mat itself, the, the hair gets pulled off of the rabbit. So there, there could be bald, bald spots. A lot of this is just going to be waste. Wasted wool. Um, some people will use, they'll send this through like a triple picker. Some people will cut this up into little parts and use it as naps, like little um, pieces of texture in yarn. So if you're somebody who does a lot of textured yarn, this is a fun thing if you dye this and then cut it into small little, smaller parts, you get kind of bumpy yarn. And that's one way if you have your, your matted wool, one way to actually use it. Another thing is if you let a rabbit get matted or if you have a situation like this where there's babies and they're just gonna be crawling all over the mom and they're just gonna mat up the wool anyways. And you, like in our situation, it was cooler. We chose to keep the chose to keep the wool on, so. The babies crawled all around, matted her up.
Do you guys see these little, you can see these little bits of dark? This is a coat that, that means this spot was not growing at the same rate, like a non-sync, non-sync, non-synchronized coat, or in her case, she had babies. So be very careful when you're looking at a rabbit and you see all those little darker spots, especially, you can't see them on a white rabbit, but like on a, on a rabbit like this, it's easy to see. Hello, Fee. Yes, German. So as you see, like when I'm poking the scissors in through the wool here, this isn't hitting her skin. It's just all wool and it's not going through. And it's not going through, this is a dense coat, but also because it is matted. <sighs> so this is just what we'll do. Normally I'm pretty quiet. I didn't put the cat away, so. The cat's actually here. So normally if I make a video, I've been doing a lot of like recording the voice afterwards because literally I just stop and keep doing what I'm doing. Let's see here. Um, the matting of Germans and French, that's an awesome question. I think this particular dough, she mats up a bit more than some of the other Germans I've had, but also she's had more litters of babies consistently so she really hasn't had a full good like six month period where there were no babies for her. There's, um, I had a doe named Libby. One of my friends has her and she was like, the breeder I purchased her from kept the lines as close as she could while keeping the rabbits, you know, healthy. Um, to the original German imports to, in, to the United States. And her wool was noticeably different than some of the newer Germans that I was seeing. She really did not mat easily at all. And some of the newer Germans, they just, um, I, I'm not sure if it's just certain lines, but there seem, there seem to be some that have pretty, you know, just a lot less, a lot less guard hair. So then, I'll, then you get more matting. I've actually never owned a French. Satins, English, Germans. I had a Jersey Woolly. The Jersey Woolly was the one that I purchased that was like, had quite a bit of matting. That was the first and only Jersey Woolly. I just couldn't. Uh, couldn't get the wool production, obviously, but I don't know if anyone watches Harry Potter. We ended up naming him Voldemort. He was like the most uh, very, I don't know, the dude was hyper. And that's definitely not something I was interested in. Oh, yours are crazy. <laughs> they mat like crazy. What what kind of rabbits do you have if they're matting like crazy? I thought you said all your rabbits were crazy at first. And I thought, well, you know, what can you do? All right. So there's parts of this you can see when we pull. Parts of this are not matted. They can come apart pretty easily. You, I don't know if you can even hear that, but like, it takes a bit of effort. That's not gonna spin 
freely for me that's going to need to be carded that's how i would prefer to spin that so some of this you can see right here this is a this is a mat it's it's a mat that's not like deep close to the skin and it not the whole thing's not matted either so if you ever make hats and you want uh, if you don't want to use like an acrylic puff on the end of your hat and you save this part of the wool. If you have a nice, a thicker part of this that you didn't intend for your rabbit to mat, but you still want to use it, and you don't want to use it as a, you don't want to use that as little naps, you can use this together and sew it together, and you make a little puff ball. So they're French and they're crazy too. <laughs> There's some rabbits. I don't know. I feel I, I feel bad because sometimes people are like, no matter what I do, my rabbit won't stay, it won't stay still and it tries to bite me and it tries to like it tries to run away and it scratches and it kicks all four paws. <laughs> it's like, oh man. Some rabbits just don't they don't adjust well. Tuppence is pretty laid back. But anyways. Yours don't pull apart like that? Yeah, this is only, this is hardly matted, so. And you can see, like, I, I just, I throw it in a pile on the table. I kind of make a mess. I don't really know. But anyways, this is a big chunk. Part of this will come apart. Part of this won't. You can see underneath, you're not going to see that she has no, um, not a lot, she wasn't blown out, so there's no dander in here. You don't see any like bits of hay, bits of debris. We haven't been feeding hay for a while. <laughs> MJ, your rabbits are definitely feisty. Hello. So that's what we've got. That's what we've got for taking the mats off a rabbit. And right now we have a, uh, just about half the half the top off. We're kind of taking our time. <sighs> yeah. Okay. So taking the fur off to be as humane as possible. That's obviously the goal because the more that you know, the more that the rabbit is upset, the more it's like in a terrible and unenjoyable experience for everybody involved. And we don't want that for the rabbits. We want them to be happy and we want them to have good little rabbit lives and be able to enjoy things. So. I'm just trimming around. I don't, I don't know. Just trimming in odd ways. This is like totally not, totally not typical, except for the not talking part. Anyways, that's it you guys. Just wanted to show you a little bit about trimming off a mat. Hope you enjoyed. And if you have any things you want to leave in the comments about how you trim mats off or other helpful advice for people, feel free. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Or maybe bye-bye. Let's see.